One of the many businesses that remain in limbo right now, bowling alleys. Tonight's 7 Eyewitness News reporter Adam Unger has more on an industry that was struggling even before this pandemic began. A strike is music to a bowler's ears. But since mid-March, it's been quieter than a gutter ball. Jim Russo owns Manor Lanes 2 in Amherst, and he says the shutdown came at the worst possible time. We lost probably the biggest part of our bowling year. We lost all of our season end banquets and parties. We lost the biggest part of our leagues, you know, the last six, eight weeks. League players normally have their own equipment, while casual bowlers borrow from the alley. Brian Borowski has a plan for that, too. Our plan was to disinfect it when the customer was done bowling. So they, they would leave the bowling balls on the racks, we would disinfect it, then put it back on the racks for them. But there's no telling when those plans can be rolled out, as bowling alleys have no answer for their sub-phase reopening. And local owners say they can't take much more. We're just not sure what we're going to do. Uh, if some centers can't open in September, they're probably going to close their doors forever. And it's hard, especially when we know our facilities are large enough to properly social distance. Additional measures like using every other lane, splash guards and floor markings were used by other alleys in other states that gave them a time frame. We need an answer. We need a date. I've got my whole building torn apart because we've cleaned from top to bottom. So the skid continues with little left to spare for owners. In Lockport, Adam Unger, 7 Eyewitness News.